This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Are you looking to enhance clarity in production without a PhD in observability? Try Honey Badger Insights. Honey Badger Insights is built around structured events and Honey Badger's new query language Badger QL, which allows you to analyze data, create metrics, and design custom dashboards. All of this is available for free with Honey Badger's monitoring suite, which includes error tracking, uptime monitoring, and more. Explore your data in new ways with Badger QL. It's pretty cool and simple. So give it a try today at honeybadger.io. That's honeybadger.io. In this episode, we're going to have a look at drop downs. And so, a lot of times, the problem with select boxes can be that they take a long time to load especially if you have hundreds of records that you're loading into these select boxes. And if you have multiples of them, then this could take quite a while to load on the page. So what we're going to do is implement something where you can start typing ahead and then it'll narrow down the results. And with this, it's going to work with multiple dropdowns and then you can create the product and it works. And we are going to be using a library for this called Hotwire Combo Box. And it's one that I'm really excited about because it has a lot of promise. You are able to do your own styling or just have a simple combo box, but there's also a lot of other options. And the main one that we're going to be looking at is the asynchronous combo box because we are going to have a lot of records that's going to be looked up on the back end and using Hotwire, it'll send the options over to the front end. And what's also pretty cool is that it does support HTML. So if you have something where you want your combo boxes to have a bit more information, then you are able to render in partials to display the options. And so we'll first start with generating a model for our categories. And we're just going to have a name attribute. And let's go ahead and generate another model for our brand. And again, we'll just have a name attribute. We'll then generate a scaffold. And this is going to be for our products. And for the products, we'll just have a name. And then we'll have our category, which will be a belongs to. And then we'll also have our brand, which will also be a belongs to. And just so we're able to demonstrate this with some sample data, I'm going to add in a gem called Faker to generate some random data for our categories and also the brands. And while we're in the terminal, let's go ahead and also run the bundle. And we'll add in the hotwire underscore combo box. And then we'll need to add in the JavaScript library. And we can do that with a yarn add, and then we'll paste in the name of the library. And once all that's done, we can go ahead and run Rails DB migrate to migrate our database. And so to start off, because we are going to have a few different moving parts, I'm going to start off in the form for the products. So we have a text field for a category ID. And typically for something like this, you would have a select. And because we're using a select, we need to add in our options, which I'm just going to paste in because this isn't really the focus for our episode, but we're grabbing all of the categories and all of the brands. We're just mapping through them and then returning an array of arrays where we have the name and ID of both. And we want to retain our form control class. So we do need to pass in an empty option, which is the select options. And then we can pass in our HTML options. And so let's have a look and what this looks like. And we can come under the DB seeds and we'll generate a bunch of category and brands. So I'll go ahead and run the Rails DB seed to seed our database. And it'll take a moment to generate the 2000 records. But once that's done, we can go ahead and start up our Rails application and test this out. So I'll go to our list of products. We'll create a new product. And here you'll see that we have all of our different categories. And then we also have all of our different brands. And this works, but it's not a very nice list. And it's pretty difficult to navigate, especially if you had more than a thousand records on each. And depending on a lot of different variables, this could actually take quite a while to load. And so that's where Hotwire Combo Box will come into play. So for the Combo Box, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a form.combo box. And this is going to be for our category underscore ID. And then we need to give it a path because we're going to be searching on the server side. So I do need to create an endpoint for this, but I'm just going to call it 
the searches underscore categories underscore path. And if we wanted to, we could give a label. And for this label, I'm going to give it our category. And we'll also have a placeholder and we'll just call it the select an option. And so that means that I can get rid of our form label as well as our form select. But before we test this out, we will need to generate our searches category path. And so in our terminal, I'm going to do a Rails generate controller and we'll namespace it under the searches and we'll have our categories. And we just need the show action. And once that's done, I'm also going to go ahead and do the same thing for the brands. And depending on your application, you may need to change the naming of this to make it a bit more applicable in your situation. However, I do like having the namespace that is different than the rest of the application because this is very specific to the searches or a lookup. So I would want to have that separate from something in the categories controller. So the way I like doing it is to stick more to the CRUD style rather than adding in additional actions into the controllers. I find it just more maintainable over time. But next, we can go into our routes.rb. You'll see that we have two endpoints for the brands and categories. And I'm just going to change this to a resource. And the resource is going to be for the brands and the categories. And we only need the show action. So that way, we can also take this combo box and do something very similar for the brands. So we'll have a brand ID and this is going to hit the searches brands path and we'll have a label for the brand. So now we can go ahead and comment out the label and the select and our view is pretty much done. However, there is still a bit of work because with the hotwire combo box, we do have some styling that we need to add. And we can add that to our layouts file and I'll put it in the head and we can insert in the combo box underscore style underscore tag. So now that this part is pretty much done, we can come under our controllers in the searches and we can start configuring our brands and categories. And this should be pretty simple. We'll just set an instance variable called brands on the brands controller just so we can access the records within our view. And we can do a search on the brand where, and I want to do a lookup where our name, because that is the attribute we're going to be searching on, is like, and then some kind of query. And this query, we could just put in as a percent percent. So it's going to look on the left and right side. And then we can interplay it in our params and the queue for query. And so combo box, when you are typing in a search, it is going to pass in a params with a query. The only other thing I'm going to do here is just order it by the name, just so it's alphabetical. And so if we didn't want to do anything else, then we could just leave it like this. Depending on your application, if you do have a lot of items that could be returned in a select, you may want to limit it so it doesn't display everything. That way, rendering in the options will be a lot faster. But we do need to come under our brands in the views, searches, brands, and in the show HTML ERB. I'm actually going to rename this as the show turbo underscore stream dot ERB. And within here, we just need to put in some ERB tags within async underscore combo box underscore options. And this is going to be for our brands. And I'm just going to map through our brands where we have our brand dot name and our brand dot ID. And that's all we have to do for it. So I'm going to copy this and do the same thing for the categories where I'll first rename it to a turbo underscore stream ERB file. And then I'll paste this in updating this to categories and updating this local variable to category. We also need to come up into our categories controller, which is going to be very similar to the brands. So I'll just copy that into our categories controller, updating the names. And that's really all we have to do. And there is one other thing that we have to do. We do need to register the stimulus controller. So typically when you go to register as stimulus controller, you would do it under the app JavaScript controllers. And in the index.js, you would run that bin rail stimulus manifest update. However, because we are going to be using a third party library, which we'll just demonstrate it here. 
I can paste in the hardware combo box stimulus controller that we would be using. If you were to ever add another stimulus controller, this is going to be ran automatically if you use the Rails Generate Stimulus Controller. But let's see what happens. We ran this and then you see it disappeared because this is automatically generated. So that means putting in the hardware combo box controller code within here isn't a good idea. Instead, I'm going to put it under the application.js. And above the export application, we'll do our import for the hardware combo box controller. And that's importing it in from Jose Ferraris. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And then the hotwire combo box. We can then register it with the application dot register our hotwire dash combo box. And that stimulus controller name is going to be linked to the hardware combo box controller. And so now if you were to run the stimulus manifest update, it's not going to remove our imported in library. And so this probably isn't the best place to put it. You could create another file that you could then include any third party stimulus controllers, but you get the idea where putting it under the index.js is just a bad idea. And so coming back to our application, refreshing the page, you'll see that we do have our categories. We can click in here to search for an options and our whole list loads up. If we start typing in something like short, we get our short story pop up and we can select it. We can do the same for the brands and I'll just pick one in the B section. So we'll choose the block and sons and we'll create our product. And so that persists and it works. If we go to edit it, you will see that we got an error with an undefined method to combo box display. And essentially what that means is that we have an active record being passed into that and it's expecting to have defined within our model a combo box display. Let's just put in the name on both of these, save it, we'll refresh the page and that seemed to work. So now that we have within our category and brand, the two combo box display method, we can come into our turbo stream and I'm just going to get rid of this mapping because now it's going to refer to that method and this should still work. So in both of these, I'm going to just return the array of records instead of specifying our name and ID arrays. We'll come back to a new product, we'll refresh the page, and you'll see that it still works. So that is a bit cleaner option than having to create our own arrays. We'll go ahead and create those, we can edit it, and it works. But one thing I don't like is that we lost our styling. So for the categories and brands, if we inspect this, you'll see that it's doing quite a bit and it's not really the standard select. Instead, we have this field set and within the field set, we have a label input and then another div, which is displaying our text box and also all of the options. And so in our style sheets, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to override the hardware dash combo box and also want to override the hardware combo box underscore underscore the main underscore underscore wrapper. And in both cases, I want the width to be 100%. And I am going to set important on here just to override any other values. So we can save that, come back, and we'll refresh the page. And now you see that we got our full width back. And so overall, the hardware combo box shows a lot of promise. And if you need it for simple use cases, then this could be a very easy solution for a complicated feature. And I think this library has a lot of promise as it is still in its early stages. But for very simple use cases, I think that this is a promising solution. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.